Welcome back to H20, Special Relativity. In this short video, we look at the historic backdrop, the time in which Einstein was able to develop the theory of special relativity. What were people thinking? What was you know, the physics landscape of the time? How was technology developed? Uh, and, and how did all those things come together for Einstein to thrive and come forward with those important discoveries in physics. We have to go back to 1900, around that time in which Einstein was able to, you know, break through, break out um, and come up with completely new ideas in, in physics. Um, before we go into the discussion of, of the timelines, um, I'd like you to be invited to come to Geneva, to Switzerland, to Bern, to Zurich, to the places in which this all happened. Um, especially Bern is a, is a historic town, wasn't destroyed in the Second World War. And if you walk down the streets, um, here is a picture of me two years ago in front of the Einstein house. You know, the streets are basically unchanged for the last 100, 150 years. So you look up into the window and you see Einstein looking down at you. Um, so if you go back 200 years um, in Italy, people like Volta and others started to make use of electromagnetic effects. The first batteries were developed and a theory of wave, a wave theory of light was developed. That then led, you know, and the, you know, slowly developed into a theory of electromagnetism and the understanding of those phenomena. And the very same time in Europe, the first railroad systems were developed. Um, electromagnetic induction was understood. And then in 1860s, in the 1860s, Maxwell was able to put all of those concepts together in his famous Maxwell equations, which are discussed, discussed at length in 802. People were then, because of the railroads, um, but also because of telegraphic cables, able to communicate and move over larger distance in shorter amount of time. And that led to the need of synchronizing clocks uh, to that point, you know, each town had one or few clock towers, and you just read off the time, and that's the time of day. There was no need to be able to tell what time is it in London when you have your breakfast in Munich, or uh, what time, you know, the store opens in a different city. There was no need for this kind of synchronization. But with the expansion of railroad specifically, there was a need to understand when a train when a, when a uh, train is on a track and such that it doesn't uh, intersect with another train and it's, you know, avoiding collisions. You also want to know when you have to be at a train station in order to catch the train. Uh, those things became important and they led to patents filed around this time and also later on. On the theory of light, people developed all kinds of ideas and conflicting ideas for example, mechanical models of light, um, which relied on the existence of a medium in which light travels, and we will discuss this at length. In the 1818s, um, there's a new phenomena in the structure of physics. Up to this point, there was a professor of physics at an institute, he had a chair and everybody was working for them. Um, but then, you know, there was a, a change in, in, in the way physics research was conducted such that started to be a division of labor between experimental physicists and theoretical physicists. Around this time, Thomas Edison uh, developed light bulbs, uh, meaning that light and electricity, those two things became more woven together. Um, electromagnetic waves were discovered and Michelson and Morley conducted the experiment and they did find, they did not find a medium which carried light waves. And we'll discuss the Michelson Morley experiment in much more depth. Um, but this was basically the backdrop. You know, Michelson and Morley, uh, the idea of electromagnetic waves, how do they actually travel? Uh, what is the speed in which they travel? What are the medium? And how does this all interact? So Einstein was born into this. He was born in Ulm, a German town, a small German town on March 14th, 1879, on Pi Day. 
Um, he spent his youth in Munich where his father, he was, um, he had an electrical company, a company which uh, provided electrical services, for example, for the October, Oktoberfest in Munich. Um, and his business went up and down and had to be relocated later into Italy. Um, uh, it was a difficult and interesting time. So Einstein went to school in Munich, in a gymnasium in, in, in Munich. Uh, and at some point it was time for him to go to military service and he avoided this by becoming stateless. Uh, he then wanted to enroll in uh, in university uh, in Switzerland, the Polytechnik, or the Eidgenössische Technische Hochschule in Zurich. Um, but he wasn't quite admitted, uh, mainly because his French wasn't quite sufficient. So he had to go an extra round of studying in order to be then admitted to uh, the Polytechnik. One of his mentors at the time was Herr Professor Weber. Uh, he was a leading physicist there. And they had an interesting relationship, which I come back to in a little while. While studying in, um, in, uh, in, in, in Zurich, <clears throat> um, Einstein met his wife, Mileva Maric. Um, she was also a physics student, one of the few female physics students there. And they fell in love and they uh, married and they had a, had a child together, uh, children together. In 1900, um, Einstein graduated. Um, he wasn't the best student in class, um, neither was Mileva Maric, and he had a hard time finding a career. So he wanted to stay at the university and enter an academic career, and that required the mentors to be uh, in favor of this. And since Einstein didn't quite develop a good relationship with Professor Weber and the other um, professors around, uh, they didn't want him there, they didn't promote his career. So he didn't know quite what to do, um, went back to his parents to Italy and, and, and just didn't get any traction from where he was. And he was quite anxious about this and he just visible in letters. Uh, he wrote. But he had good friends there. He, um, he had a, a good friend, Marcel Grossmann specifically, who helped him get into, after some back and forth, a, a position as a lower level patent clerk um, in a patent office in Bern. And so this was a starting point for a career. So he had this, you know, was a patent clerk. He had a lot of time on his hand beyond that. And they started something which was called the um, um, Olympia Academy, which, uh, you know, consisted of a group of people who studied with and friends of Einstein, including um, Marcel Grossmann. And they talked and spent time, took long walks, uh, you know, spent time drinking, partying, if you want, um, and but specifically talking about physics. Um, and in this framework, Einstein was able to develop his ideas. And then 1905 came, uh, not in a sudden, but in 1905, he was able, out of this context, to develop, develop five very, very important paper. The first one, was on light quantum. Um, he was able to describe the emission and absorption of light. In April then, which is, was part of his PhD thesis, he was able to uh, characterize the size of molecules. And in May, he was able to show the existence of atoms. He was basically demonstrating this by following Browning random motion of atoms. And then in June, he wrote a paper named electrodynamics of moving bodies. And that is the paper in which he discovers or describes special relativity. On further review, he discovered that there's a consequence of special relativity that energy and mass are equivalent in his famous equation E equal mc squared. And we'll come to this as well. So this is basically the framework of, of this lecture. Um, if you then move forward into general relativity, which was developed by Einstein in 1915, um, you can then again follow the developments of science of quantum mechanics of general relativity and the conundrum of describing those two concepts at the very same time in which then Einstein lived and moved. His career developed then from there on, <clears throat> not instantly, but 
systematically. He had a call as a professor in, uh, in Berlin later on. And uh, after the Nazis took over in Germany, he decided to flee Germany. And he went, uh, moved to the United States, where he took on a position in Princeton. Um, the rest is history as you want, and we'll hear more about this uh, tomorrow.